Welcome to another video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about a date time picker database template that I just finished. Now, as you're probably aware, Access has a default date picker. So if you have any date field in your database and you click on it, this little guy pops up and there's an option so you can turn this off if you want to. But a lot of people find this guy kind of limiting. There really aren't a lot of options you can do with it aside from just pick a date. Now Microsoft had a calendar control that you could actually embed in your forms in Microsoft Access, but they got rid of it in 2010. And then they replaced it subsequently with that date picker that I just showed you. I kind of like this control, although I try to avoid using external controls. I like to keep everything as possible in my Access database in the form of forms and reports and tables and queries and so on. I don't like DLLs, I don't like COM objects, I don't like using external, especially third-party controls. Because if you distribute your database, it becomes a big pain. So I have to keep everything in my database, if possible, as a form. So that's when I created this guy a couple of years ago. I created a calendar pop-up. It's just a form in Access, but it's got a lot of the same functionality that Microsoft's control had with some extra benefits in it. I actually put together a whole seminar on how you can design forms and reports that display things in a monthly calendar type format because that's one of the shortcomings of Microsoft Access. If you want to display anything in the form of an actual calendar, it's a lot of work. So I've got a whole seminar on how to do this. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here. I'll put a link to this seminar in the description below the video. But the point of this video is the calendar pop-up actually had a lot of people email me and say, hey, that's great, but Microsoft Access doesn't have any way to pick times either. I want a nice, pretty way for my users to select a time value, like a, a punch clock if you're clocking in and out of work. So that's what I just recently did. I just recently built a new template. And in this template, I built a couple of different ways that your users can pick times. Uh, the one on the top there you can see is a simple hour and minute with an AM, PM, and those are combo boxes. Those will drop down. I'll show you how all this works in a minute. Then we've got a simple spinner set on the left side there where it's 24 hour time. And then to the right, there's some list boxes. And again, it works the same way. Instead of just being drop down combo boxes, you can actually pick from a list box. And of course, the coolest thing that I built is this guy, the analog clock. We can actually click on the hours and the minutes and then the little, the little clock face, the little hands will go around there for you. So this will make it nice and easy for your users to pick a time if you just you know want to have it pop up for them and they can they can click on this or they can or you can embed this inside of your forms. And of course I added configurable options too. You can specify what the colors are for all of the clock uh, features, the hour, the hands, the AM, PM, all that stuff. So in this video, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of everything that this template includes. So here is the main menu. There's pop-up forms and there's embedded forms. The embedded forms go inside of another form. Here's how the pop-up forms work. Here's date one. You just Here's the date field right here. Select the date. All right, here's the basic calendar form that I built years ago. Still, It's still good, right? April 2020, you can move the year. You can move the month like this. This shows the current date. Today is April 21st, 2020. You can pick what date you want and notice how it instantly gets set back in this form over here. This is not a control. This is not a plugin. This is an actual form, right? Right over here in your forms collection. So when you distribute this database, it goes with the database. You don't have to do any special crazy stuff to get this to install. You want to pick today's date? There's today's date. You hit today. All right, close it and there you go. This just shows you how to do the same thing, but with a double click. You double click here, pick a date, close it. The times are down here. There's digital one, which looks like this, all right, just up and down. I went to the minute on this. If you want seconds, you can easily add seconds. I didn't bother including seconds. That's just simply a matter of personal preference. You could take the template and edit it however you want to edit it. And if enough of you really want me to add seconds to one of them, I will. But I figure of the people that I've talked to, 99% of them, you're using this for things like time clocks or you know service calls. Seconds really don't matter. If you're, if you're doing something scientific or you know, you're tracking race car times, then yeah, you might want seconds. But for the majority of people, it's not a big deal. Same thing here. All right, drop this down. Six. 
Now, for this, I went in increments of 15. I did this, again, this is just an, an option that I chose because, again, most people are using this for, for appointments or for scheduling or for hours worked, and, you know, 6.30 is fine. You can change this if you want to. This is an editable box right here. You can click on this and edit the list. It's, it's that easy. You can turn this off in the, in the preferences in the properties for the form if you don't want your end users changing this list. But if you want to make this in increments of five or put them all in there, that's fine too. All right, digital three, same thing, but with open list boxes. And you can change this if you want to, AM, PM, just like that. All right, or go to now. All right, now here's the coolest one, the analog clock. This one took me a while to build. All right, one, 55. Now, again, this goes in increments of five minutes. If you want to add more on here, you can. All right. But I, again, in my logic, I figured this would be more than good enough for most people. All right. There's now. All right. It's about 1238. So it's going to go to the, the previous five minute increment. All right. If you wanted to set it to the next one, you can. Very easy setting to change. All right. Now, I actually thought about putting like a clock face behind this. And you can if you want to. There's an option in the configurations and the settings in here. You can make these numbers transparent. All right. It's down here on the bottom. There we go. All right. Our label for opaque. You can set the opaque to, to no. And now all these letters become opaque. You can still click on them. You got to kind of guess where they are. But that's so you can drop like a, a picture. Like I got a clock face picture. Where is it? Let me see if I can find it. Uh, this guy here. Just go online. Find yourself a clock face picture like that drop that on the form as a background and then your users can simply just click right over these numbers and you can move the labels around on here if you go into design view you can move around these labels and where they are the, the faces are just lines that are redrawn all right so all of everything in here is customizable save changes now as well just in case all right if you want to change the colors all right here's the the AM PM label four color on and off. All right, so this this one's on. All right, now this one's on. That's the on and off color. So say you want to make these blue. All right, click on here, which is a color value. Now as soon as if if the form detects the word color in here, it makes this color button available. So just click the color button, pick like blue, and then hit OK. And now you're blue. That's too dark. I mean, that's a that's a better off color. So let's make that the off color. So I'm just going to copy this one, copy, and then paste. All right, now they're both blue, but now we want the on one to be a lighter blue. So go color, and then maybe that's the on color. See? That's so how you can change the colors in here. All right, there's the the uh, the color, the foreground color default, the foreground color current, and the foreground color selected. All right, so the default color is just what the regular clock face looks like. This is for the hour. There's the minutes, right? The current I've got set to gray, so you can see that's the current color. And then the selected color is this bright green. I'm going to put those green colors back just because I like the way that looks better. There. And maybe we'll go with this up here like that. No, I don't like that. You see what I'm saying, though? You can come in here and play with these. All right, the opaque values, the hour label back opaque. You can make the background colors actually have a color instead of them being opaque or not. Uh, just set that to 1 or 0. And you can see there's the background colors. If you want to put background colors on here, you can. All right, I like them not. I like them transparent. There's the hand width. All right, there's the hour hand width and the minute hand width. If you want the hour hand to be a little bit thinner, maybe go to two. See, the line gets the line gets thinner. That's just the the line style. Okay, the hand style. There's a bunch of different hand styles in here, right? And these are straight out of access. These are these are just the the access uh, uh, properties. All right, you want like dots? Pick four. There's, well, you get lines for a thick line, but they'll normally show up as dots. If you set this down to like two, they kind of look more like dots. Okay. Six and one. You can change the font name for the AM, PM letters. You can, you can do this for all of them if you want to. Just go in the code and, and set it up. Once you get the template, it's, you'll see how I did it. It's very simple to change. Now, some of these properties deal with the digital clocks, and one of the upgrades I might make to this in the future, if enough people want to see it, is I might separate these settings and make them for each individual um, uh, clock form, because right now, 
you get the, the analog by default. But if you go to like the digital list boxes, hit this little hit this little watch face button here, and that one pops up. Whatever you pick in this list here, these digital ones apply to all three of the digital uh, forms. So you could pop all of them up if you want to. See, there's the spinner. All right, I like I like working with the list box. So if you want to change the digital form background color, right, the purple, there you go. Okay, very easy to do. Okay, but if enough people want to see it, I can split these off. So in, in addition to the setting name, there's a, a a form name too that goes with each property. And then when you change this, you just see the list of properties. For right now, it's just one big settings table. I didn't think that far ahead. <laughs> I wasn't sure if this was gonna be a popular template, so I wasn't gonna put too much work into it. But that's something you could certainly do. There's one more feature that I put in here, and that's the hand info. These are basically coordinates for each one of these hands. And what the code basically does is um, it draws a box and then it sets the slant for the box, either true or false, based on these coordinates. So if you want to change the layout of this guy and you want to move these around a little bit, you can. Here, for example, are some different hand configurations I came up with just messing around. And you can just move the buttons, you can move the labels wherever you want on the form, and then use that, that hand configuration tool to simply set where they go. The tool basically sets, you know, which label, like this is label six, label seven, and so on. It, it picks the top left height and width and the slant of the line. And so you get something that looks like that, <laughs> right? Here's the embedded time form. This is simply the digital spinner embedded inside of a form where you've got a start, start time and an end time, All right? So you pick your start time click down here, it'll default the end time to whatever the start time was, and then you can change it. See how that works? That way if you're picking like a, you know, your, your shift, right? What time is your shift start? Well, okay, I started at 3 p.m. Come down here, boom. It defaults to 3 p.m. What time are you over? You just click up a couple times, right? Or now, and you can change it. And all the events are built right into this form. And this is just pulled in from the external form. If you want to embed the analog clock version, you can. It works the exact same way, the code is the same. You just change the form name. Okay, so those are all the features that are included in the new date time picker. It's got the analog clock form, it's got the three different digital forms, it's got the settings form, it's got the hand picker form, so you can, you can set where the hands are on the clock. And I'm also including the calendar template, that uh, the calendar pop-up form that I did have for sale previously as well. So you can find them on my website. Here's a link to purchase, 599cd.com slash xdtimep. That's what that is on the bottom there, it's a short link. I'll put a link to it in the description below the video so you can just click on it. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me. There's my email address, amacron at gmail.com. Take care and we'll see you next time.